Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And today I'm gonna to talk about some of the tools in the world of game development that I'm most excited for. This doesn't mean they're the best tools or anything. They're just things that have some very interesting things on the horizon. I'm gonna start with three that are just kind of no-brainers and they're kind of boring. The first one, obviously, is Blender. Blender is improving at a staggering rate. I'm always excited by the next release of Blender coming along. So obviously it is on the list, as is the Godot game engine. Godot is improving faster than most of the other engines out there. It's also younger, so that does make sense. Every new release of Godot has me pretty excited. And then finally, and to be honest, I was a little tempted not to put this on the list. Unreal Engine. Now, Unreal Engine has been killing it for years now. They keep adding more and more new features. They don't always work, but there's just a ton in every new release. And even in the near future, there's new things like mega lights and substrate uh, and uh, new fluid effects, including new animation tools, modeling tools, etc. There's just so much more in each release of Unreal Engine. The reason I was thinking about not putting it on is, to be honest, everything I've heard about Unreal Engine 6, it looks like they're moving towards, like, Unreal Engine for Fortnite and Verse stuff into the mainstream Unreal, and I'm just not that excited about it. But they add so much in each individual release that you just, you can't not include Unreal Engine as an exciting project. All right, so that's it with the no-brainers. Let's move on. And the first one here is a modeling tool. Now, this one is expanding at a staggering rate. It is incredibly cool, and I highly recommend you check it out. It is a program called Plasticity. It is a 3D modeler for Blender. It works in just such a different way. If you're doing hard surfacing work, it is just lovely to work with. My, my hands-on with this one, I didn't actually do it that much justice, and I would like to actually revisit this program at some point in the future. So this is a commercial modeling application. That's definitely one of those things you want to know about. But Plasticity, Plasticity, if you are doing hard surface modeling, it is hard to beat it. It is one of the coolest applications out there. And again, it keeps improving at a pretty staggering rate. Next up, we have Material Maker. Now, I had to throw Material Maker on this list because it's sort of like a pet of mine. I love this program. I want to raise as much exposure to it as possible. And quite frankly, they just keep adding more and more cool stuff to it. The closest thing you think of to uh, Material Maker is this is basically a free and open source version of Substance uh, Designer for creating textures procedurally. Uh, it's completely free, completely open source. The cool thing here is they just keep adding cooler and cooler new features to it. So Material Maker, every time there's a new release, I am pretty stoked. Next up, we have Instamat. Now, Instamat is kind of the same thing. It's just on steroids. This is a super powered tool. Uh, and again, if you need to create textures, it is kind of amazing what Instamat is actually capable of. If you have never checked out Instamat before, I highly recommend you do so now. Uh, it's especially with um, Mixer, uh, so um, part of the whole Quixel, Quixel Mixer thing, seems to be kind of dying or being integrated into Unreal Engine directly. So there's not that many alternatives out there to Substance, but I think if you check this guy out, you'll be pretty amazed at what Instamat can already do, and it keeps ex expanding at a pretty staggering rate. So Instamat is one you definitely want to keep your eye on, especially if you are working with procedural textures. Next up, we have Pixie Editor. I covered this one about two months ago. This is one of my surprise discoveries of the year. I definitely have my eye on this one going forward. It is an awesome tool. It's probably my tool of 2025. If I was to give out awards and if 2025 was over now, Pixie Editor pretty much might make that list because it is a brand new open source graphics application. It has a very clean user interface. Uh, it is free. And then on top of that, it does procedural art. So you can do these node-based art designs like you see here. Also does pixel art and then painting art like Photoshop. It also does vector graphics and animation. All of these things are in there today. Now, they're obviously not full, function, full functioning in everywhere. They're, they're still blooming out some of these features. It, it is something that is definitely under development, but what's there already is amazing. And you look at the roadmap, you got some pretty interesting stuff coming in the future. I am, again, pretty stoked about this application. If you've never checked out Pixie Editor, I highly recommend you do so. The foundation there is already pretty amazing, and where they could potentially go with this one, the sky is really the limit. Uh, next up, we've got Toon Boom Jump. Now, this one, it doesn't really exist as a public-facing product yet. Uh, you can actually go join their channel and uh, find out the beta, the latest beta build of it, but this isn't a product yet, but I definitely have my eye on it. So what exactly is Toon Boom? Well, Toon Boom is one of uh, the major commercial animation softwares out there, but Jump is uh, taking a very interesting approach because Jump is basically blending Toon Boom 
and the Godot game engine. So if you want to work directly inside of, you want to do your 2D animations, but you're also developing a game, this could be a game changer. So again, it's Toon Boom's uh, 2D animation tools and the Godot game engine. It'd be interested to see how they merge together. I definitely have my eye on this project. Next up, we have Unity. Now you might be thinking, Unity, well, that's a little boring. And to be honest, Unity 6.x, well, okay releases. They don't have me that excited, but Unity 7, woof. Unity 7 does have me excited. It's kind of going to be a make or break program for the company, so no pressure there. But from what I've heard of talking to Unity developers and the roadmap and everything about where Unity 7 is going, Unity 7 is sort of like the clean start they've wanted for a long time. So it's going to break some things. You're going to have some backwards compatibility, not necessarily there, but we're also going to streamline a lot of things. So the things like the multiple different pipelines are going to be merged back together. Things like entities, the dot system, all that stuff, it's going to be built into the core as opposed to this kind of weird hacky upgrade. If they pull Unity 7 off, it may make Unity so much more interesting of a project going forward. Now, I don't know when we're going to get Unity 7. There is a lot of work going on there. We're going to have a number of Unity 6 releases, but hopefully we get to see like an alpha version of it sometime soon because this is going to be the most substantial Unity version in a very, very long time. So I am pretty stoked about Unity 7, to be honest. Uh, next up, we have O3DE. Now, if you're a regular this channel, you may find that actually kind of shocking because I have had a massive love-hate uh, relationship with this program going back to the very, very beginning. Because quite frankly, uh, O3DE was previously known as Lumberyard, which before that it was a fork of CryEngine. Uh, it had so much potential and under Amazon, you could use it completely for free as long as you use their back end. Amazon Game Studios, well, that did not work out too well. And they've actually spun off O3DE. And then it's been this massive rewrite for the most part. And at this point in time, O3DE is pretty much a brand new game engine aimed at more of the A to triple A segment. And there's not really too many open source options in that space. Like, you could argue you could make triple A games in Godot, but really it's not aiming for that segment. And, and really, honestly, you can't so much. So O3D is going to fill this very interesting niche if it gets there. But the reason why I'm excited is the last couple of releases of O3DE, uh, my hate is going away and my love is growing. So this is a uh, game engine that I have my eye on. I have a lot of faith in it now and I wouldn't have said that before. So this is one of the ones I definitely have my eye on because it, it's kind of hitting that critical mass. A lot of the functionality, it's just getting much more usable, more usable than it has ever been, either as Lumberyard or as O3DE. So this could be one to definitely keep your eyes on. Then we've got Graphite. Now this is another one that came out this year, I, I think anyways. Uh, I discovered it this year anyways, and this is a vector graphics application. It does raster graphics as well. Um, and again, I highly recommend checking it out. So it started life as a vector editor. It slowly kind of added more and more tools into it. Uh, I like vector workflow. I actually use Infinity Designer for pretty much all of my work before that. I used Adobe Illustrator quite a bit. And it does a lot of these things. But the big thing behind this one is it is procedural driven as well. So you can do things like morph your work. So there you can see that the uh, leaves changing over time. So it is designed around these procedural generative pipelines. It's a very very cool application. Uh, and again, I have a lot of interest in seeing where this one ultimately goes. It's again, a completely different graphical workflow. Um, I would say I probably like Pixie Editor a little bit better in terms of my excitement level, but Graphite, uh, it was really one of my big surprises of the year. Uh, I am quite impressed with where this program is and I'm interested in seeing where it will ultimately go. And then we have Cascadour. Now Cascadour is just, it's this, AI assisted or machine learning assisted animation tool. The big thing about Cascadour is it's one of those ones that did machine learning right. It's not trying to replace the artist, it's trying to supplement the artist. And what I find with Cascadour is I cannot animate like at all, uh, but with Cascadour, I can animate badly. And that is a huge step forward, definitely is. And each time they add more and more capabilities that kind of blow my mind. So Cascadour is one of those ones, I think they do an update about every six months and each time they have this new release, you're kind of like, wow, that is super impressive. So Cascadour definitely makes this list as well. And then we have Nomad Sculpt. Now, Nomad Sculpt, the, the website is, is not very exciting uh, because this is actually a mobile application. So it's this guy over here. Um, and it has been ported over to desktop. So what this is ultimately going to be is like 
a cheap accessible sculpting tool. Now, the, you know, you've got things like ZBrush, uh, which is about $1,000. You have 3D Coat, which is about four or $500, and then you have Blender. So what it's gotta do is be easier or more accommodating or faster or better than Blender for sculpting uh, it's to kind of find its own niche. At 30, 40 bucks, it doesn't have to do a whole lot more, it just has to have nicer, better workflow. But I've used Nomad Sculpt on mobile devices and it is lovely. So I'd love to see what they ultimately pulled off for this one on desktop. Do they make it work? I will definitely have my eye on this guy. And then we have the Bevy game engine. Now, Bevy is a Rust-powered game framework. Uh, again, a lot of times the distinction between a framework and an engine is like one editor to rule them all. And right now, Bevy doesn't have that, but they've been setting all the pieces in place to make it so that you can build this editing environment on top of it. Well, that is their priorities going forward. The editor is getting closer and closer and closer to being a thing. And once Bevy has an editor, I think this is going to be one of the most interesting game engines out there right now. Without having that tooling to make it easy to get started with, uh, Bevy is a hard recommendation except for to like diehard Rust heads. But if it becomes more accessible, easy to use, and it pulls all these things together and builds on top of this wonderful framework that they've built below it, which is incredibly feature rich, uh, it's a project that has a hell of a lot of potential in my opinion but i think that editor that editor is what will bring them towards mainstream like large compete with the likes of godot or game maker or unity or unreal or construct etc i think this is what they need to really be in that space uh and then we have one other game engine and this is the hazel engine now the hazel engine this has been around forever it is from a youtuber called the churno now the biggest reason why it's on this list right now is because he has talked about it being opened up free for everyone going forward. So right now it's only available for patrons. He does have plans to open it up going forward for everybody out there. So anybody will be able to go ahead and use it. I think once that's the case, this will be very, very interesting. So I've definitely got my eye on it in that regard. And then we're gonna finish things off with Sandbox or S and Box. This is a spiritual successor to Gary's Mod, which is actually a source engine mod for creating uh, machinima and little short game experiences and so on. And they've gone one step further with that and they've basically created a full-blown game engine here using the C-sharp programming language for your game logic, but you've also got access to sources tools, things like the hammer editor and so on. And then community stuff aspects, you've got multiplayer built in here as well. Uh, a cloud community for getting other assets. Again, hammer is in there, the level editor used by um, Valve. Uh, and then action graph for visually scripting things. This is a game slash game engine. It's getting closer and closer and closer to being a thing. Uh, and it's one that, again, it, it could just be a novelty on the side or it actually could bloom into another player in the game engine space. And I'm ultimately gonna be interested in seeing where Sandbox turns out in that regard. Now there's a ton of things I did not include on this list that I still think are amazing projects. Maybe I just don't have any insight into where they're going in the future, uh, such as say the Flax game engine. I'm still really excited by that one, but I don't know uh, what's coming next. So I'm not overwhelmingly excited about what I don't know about. There's also a lot of projects I potentially don't know at all. And then we've got projects that take like a slow and steady approach to game development. Things like the default game engine has always been wonderful, but they do like, like uh, a very tight release schedule. Every couple weeks, there's a new version. So that's awesome if you're using it. But if you're like me and you're promoting it, well, it's, it's such a, a, a quick increment in changes that you don't get really excited about these big, new, massive releases that are coming soon. So it doesn't make a list like this, which is a bit unfortunate. So those are the things that I'm kind of most excited about uh, where they are going. And again, there's gonna be a tons of things that I don't know about. We've definitely had a ton of things in the AI space, things of like basically generating whole models completely out of a prompt some terrifying things in that space as well. But I'm curious, uh, is there anything that you are super excited about going forward that I did not include on this list? If so, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe you'll introduce me to something I don't know about and it'll be on the future list. So when I cover this in 2026, hey, maybe I'll cover it then. All right, let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.